Aloha, and Tashi Delay from Kauai Tibetan Buddhist Dharma Center here on the island of Kauai. We present this class every Thursday night, 6 to 8 o'clock, recorded on our website and transmitted through Zoom globally. I'm Lama Tashi. When we present these classes in Tibetan Buddhist, Buddhist meditation practices, the simplicity of training the mind is simply to be able to relax in conditioned existence, which is what we find ourselves in the human condition. We use the term conditioned existence because from birth to now, everything is <clears throat> through others and our environment has conditioned how we think and react to inner and outer stimulus or object. This subject-object duality is the cause of pain and suffering because we have attachment, aversion, pride, jealousy, ignorance, greed, and so forth about what we are thinking and what we are uh, outwardly judging through our central perceptions and our thoughts. To break this habit or to recondition conditioned existence is simply to understand that mind and awareness are two different things. We all have awareness, but the awareness of most sentient beings or humans is about the drama world, about their involvement with the self and others and the environment. That's called the relative state of existence or the relative truth of your awareness. In the mind, there is also another truth or state of awareness that is not conditioned, and it is called ultimate awareness. And the practices of Tibetan Buddhism, as they originated from the Buddha Shakyamuni 2,600 years ago, were practiced in India, perfected in Tibet, and passed globally to, to all of us on the planet today, is to use the already innate state of awareness that is your ultimately true nature, to be able to relax with that awareness in a sense of well-being and good health. So simply put, all of these methods that we are presenting are to increase our good health physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And most important in the practice of transforming the mind are the six bodhisattva disciplines. The most important of these disciplines is the practice of meditation and yoga, because by that, you bring your body, speech, and mind into the same place or together. When the body, speech, and mind are together in a state of unity, then you have the ability to focus and most importantly, to use the mind's state of visualizing or imagination. With those two gifts, then one can easily move in and transform whatever arises into the state of pure awareness. And in that state, there's no judgment. There's no emotional conflict. And once it's established in, in, the, in your lifestyle, the way you are right now, then it, it has a lasting result. And by that, I mean, it affects the life of this time and place, and also the next life, which is coming when you leave your body in this life. So those are the benefits and perks of these practices. We, do, we approach this, what we call meditation, two ways. First of all, to establish the basis of our life support as the breath, 
and through the breath's connection to what we call the elements. Now, the elements are the same elements that our mother created our body with. The elements are the same elements that create everything in the universe, earth, water, fire, air, and space. The body has three disciplines. The dis discipline of the physical body, the discipline of the speech, and the discipline of the mind. And this is where the awareness factor is supreme. Develop it, developing it in many different ways, one can reach what is called the ultimate level of human perfection or human maturity in a word, Buddhahood. And there's nothing beyond that. There's nothing to, in that state, there's nothing to attain. It is simply a lasting, always increasing state of evolution. And it's the result of how we are growing and developing right now, today. I'm going to read from a book called Vivid Awareness. This was presented by Lama Trangu Rinpoche, who resides in Vancouver at his monastery. And uh, it's based on teachings from his, his tradition of Lama Kempo Gang, Gangshan. In the, in the book I'm reading from page 111, it is called the resting meditation of Kusulu. Now you may have heard this term in teachings from other lamas, but I want to give you the short exposition from this book. In the second part of instructions of meditation, Mama Gangchar's instruction is in the main practice of what is called resting meditation, or in, or in Sanskrit, Kusulu. Kusulu is a technique which leads one very simply uh, through an uncomplicated life. And when that person does whatever is required easily without much effort, accomplishing whatever is appropriate. Similarly, in the resting meditation of Kusulu, we do not have to go through a lot of effort to do the meditation itself. It's, it is not examining anything thoroughly, it's not studying. We just simply rest in a state, what is called equipoise, just as it is. Understanding this is the extremely important point of all meditation practice. The reason that Kusulu gains gains accomplishment is through the realization of the nature of mind as it is not something that we can buy, find by searching for it from afar or outside. It is present in the essence of the mind itself and all sentient being. We don't need not, we don't need to alter or change that in any way. That state is enough. It is not as if we were lacking something before, so we need to make something new through our meditation. It is not as though we have, that we are bad or have to go through all sorts of effort to make ourselves good. Goodness is a state that we all have. It has always been present within all of us, but we have not just not looked at it or seen it yet. So, because we have become confused. Therefore, all we need to do is just rest in meditation without changing it. We are what it, we, we see where it stays and rest right there. This is Kusulu. This means that we rest free and easy with nothing to do 
very simply. We don't need to think that we are making something good or that we need to meditate properly. It is enough to know that we have already arrived at this state of relaxed awareness. Well then, what do we need to do? We need to simply just recognize the way our mind is, just as it is. Then rest in equipoise within that state of just as it is. In the instructions in Mahamudra, this is what we call the, the natural mind. This is not knowing how our mind is or what its essence is like, but we find out by resting in this state of equipoise, just that. Sometimes we call this natural state, which just means that we do not change it, need to change it in any way. And, and using these terms, we do not need to analyze or examine too much, nor we need to alter things at all. We simply rest in the nature of mind just as it is. This is what we call kusulu, which is a term for resting meditation. Resting here means leave it alone. We don't need to do a lot or to alter it in any way, just relax. Then the essence of whatever that is appears of whatever that is. <laughs> you don't need to label it. You don't need to describe it. You just need able to be aware of it. And that awareness affects your relative state of mind and is the ultimate nature of mind. And in this way, the two truths gradually come together as one. And when that state of oneness or unity is attained, there's nothing beyond that. Now this, these two pages that I just read from have more descriptions that go on for about another five or six pages. But the rest of the book is all, many different ways to think about this state of Kusulu. But on one page, it says that without devotion, honor and respect for the teachers of these traditions, which is all the Lamas of Tibetan Buddhism and all of their lineages that go back 2,600 years in unbroken tradition from Shakyamuni Buddha to the present time, it all comes down to this. As one who sees whatever arises is able to rest simply in just that, not altering it, and just, the, just relaxing in the fresh essence of thoughts or bodily sensations as they arise, Bless us with a practice that is free from conception, fabrication, and judgment. When this state of liberation is attained, it is called the Great Perfection, Maha Adi, Maha Mudra, Zogchen, etc., etc., etc. With that, we take refuge in our own awareness. With the altruistic motivation to bring all sentient beings in the entire universe, all our mothers, animals, humans, and spirit, wherever they are and appear to this state of highest awareness. And this is called enlightenment. Then we take refuge in the six um, what we call supports of the three jewels and the three roots of Tantra. The three jewels are the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. The three roots of 
Tantra are the lamas inseparable from the peaceful and protector deities and dakini. Then we take the six bodhisattva disciplines as the basis of the path as they affect us both on the relative level and ultimate level of developing awareness and extending the results of all of that has benefit to everyone and our environment. So we start with the altruistic motivation. In order to attain enlightenment for ourselves and limitless sentient beings, our mothers, we now all together take refuge and when possible offer prostration. We go for refuge to all the holy lama. We go for refuge to all the <clears throat> yidams, which are the deities gathered in our mandala practice. We go for refuge to all the Buddhas, those who have conquered the mind and gone beyond. We go for refuge to all this supreme dharma. We go for refuge to all the noble sangha. And we go for refuge to all the Dakas and Dakinis who are the protectors and defenders of Dharma. All of these possess the wisdom eye of transcending awareness. Then the Bodhisattva prayer called Bodhicitta. To the Buddha, Dharma, and this supremely, this supreme assembly, we go for refuge until enlightenment. May I, through merit, gain practicing the six bodhisattva disciplines, accomplish the benefit, accomplish this as the benefit for the sake of all sentient beings. So these three, the altruistic motivation, the support of the Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, Lama, deities, and protectors, and with the practice of the six bodhisattva disciplines, one quickly attains the state of Kasuga, the ability to rest naturally in whatever arises, whether in meditation, waking stage, sleep, dying, or passing into the next life. Now I'll chant these in Sanskrit so all the cultures of the planet can benefit from this from these practices, and so that the spirits that inhabit our entire universe and our physical bodies and the environment around it know that we are their friends. Dog dong do wa nam ke ta dong yam te sem chen tam che tu di ne ju te ji si jeng chu ting po da chi ki bar du. Kalden Lama Dampa Nam La Chap Su Chio Yedam Chokor Gi Lancho Nam La Chap Su Chio Chanje Chon Dende Nam La Chap Su Chio Kape Gendun Nam La Chap Su Chio Dampe Chur Nam La Chap Su Chio Tao Kandro Chokyo Sume Shu Yeshe Ki Shendong Depa Nam La Chap Su Chio Sanje Chodong Choki Chok Nam La Janju Bardu Dagni Chap Su Chi Dagi Jin So Ji Pe So Naki Chola Penjur Sanje Chukarsho. When starting a Dharma session of practice, Dharma means wisdom. Actually, it means wisdom mother, Dharma. We have the word Sanjay. Sanjay is a word for Buddha, or we say complete attainment of maturity in the human condition. 
it means completely cleared of judgmental mind and the subject to object duality fixation that results from the relative or judgmental mind. And it also means completely cleared of all the emotional conflict that arises from this lack of awareness of the ultimate nature and the continual habitual tendencies that follow us like a shadow from life to life called karmic tendencies that are arising in our stream of being now, today. So we're, we're cleared of that. Sanjay is Buddha. Sanjay is not a state of happiness as a um, correction to sadness, for instance. Yes, one is happy in that state, but one is not afflicting themselves with attachment to happiness, nor are they having aversion to states of sadness or conflict. Now the, this, to most people they say, well, I have this continual problem with sadness because I have all these friends and everything's changing. It looks like everything's getting more and more uh, unfavorable is the word in Tibetan. Well, maybe it is. But on an individual level, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be that way. We have choice. And the individual is interconnected to every sentient being in the universe and everything that appears in the universe. It's all interconnected to the individual. But the individual is not an entity separate from all that. And, no, and neither is there any separation between self and others that one has involvement with. That karmic situation can disappear. Does it mean that, they, that those appearances aren't there? No. It just means that the conflict of how we interpret or interact with this, the distortion is gone. It's the same thing you do with the computer. You put in the software, whatever they call that, the codes, and they cause what needs to appear on your computer, cell phone, or whatever instruments you're using in the right way. If they don't, you delete them and then put in the correct information and everything's okay. Well, I found out that everything is infinitely okay. But do I have, do I exist? That question has answered itself. Yes and no. Yes, I exist in a state of infinite okayness. No, I am not separate in that state from anybody else, any other sentient being in the universe. So it's a shared state. And that's generosity on the ultimate state. Plus, I have a code of being good, which I read in the Kusula practice is what you're connecting to. This state of goodness is based on moral, ethics, good manners, honor, respect, devotion, and many other learned quality of the Bodhisattva training. It also is a state of patience with oneself, others, and the world as it presents itself around it, which is constantly changing. Diligence is that I keep this as an ongoing day and night, 24-7, state of development, 
which is causing a tremendous evolutionary uplifting of the simplicity of awareness itself. And the results are appropriate. Then through the meditation practice, which is what we're talking about is the key, moving the mind from distortion into clarity. Clarity with compassion. Clarity with insight. Clarity with understanding how perfect it is, how perfect this whole situation that's being presented to us in modern times is so useful. And that is insight. In a word, the sixth level of bodhisattva training, insight. Then along come the lamas and introduce you to the practice of skillful means, it's called. Skillful means means you use the nature of the energy of the universe as light and the fabric of the universe as space as symbols of deities of perfect qualities of in the human condition, and they're called deities, or divas, in Sanskrit. And they are the mind of the Lama transmitted to you physically, mentally, and emotionally through the oral transmission. So that you become like-minded, or like it. Same development of awareness. That's why we take refuge. That's why we do this practice. And you can be convinced from the moment you start your practice with the advice of the teacher, the guru, that whatever is appearing outside is a result of your own inner nature and development from previous lives and this life. And once you move beyond the growing and developing state, you're in a state of evolution it has no ceiling, and the result is highest intelligence of how to be a human being. That's all my mother wanted. Grow, develop, and evolve. So we're going to start the practice tonight. Using symbols. Spheres. Spheres are the symbol of the universal or interconnectedness of everything. That's why the planets and stars and the universes and so forth and, and other phenomena appear that way. But when we use the body, speech, and mind, which is all we have to work with, the body is a symbol of the light of the universe manifesting and in this case, in the human condition. And when we do that, we use the symbol of a white sphere of light. Then from the interaction of that light with the body, then the speech becomes affected from that energy program. And we use that as a code of a red sphere of light. I've got these two spheres. When we speak or exhale, those two energies together come together and the three, the body, speech, and mind, automatically evolve into a clear sphere of Kusulu, of being able to rest. So then the body, speech, and mind become the support of that. And this is universally applied and recognized as the nature of everything. Red, white, and blue 
supporting this clear sphere of awareness without any judgment, bringing together the big three of Tantric Buddhism, shamanistic Lamaism, of compassion, power, and insight blended with body, speech, and mind. To emphasize this tonight, we're going to use what keeps us alive in the human body, air. Now we have the symbols of the five elements, earth, water, fire, air, and space. And the air symbol is simply a half sphere of green light labeled gas or air in this case. And this is a universal element that requires the other four elements to be part of its creation. It cannot, none of the elements can exist on their own, even space. So now we're going to do what is called the three lights meditation to do what is recommended to bring your state into calmness, kusulu using the white, red, and blue codes with the breath. Then we're going to bring those three together with the air element visualized and focused on as a healing meditation using the powerful psychic nature of our minds to accomplish that. Sit with your back straight, Hands on the knees or in the lap. If you put them in the lap, just right on top of left. Head slightly tilted forward. Mouth closed, tongue resting against the palate. Eyes slightly open, gazing to the space of light directly in front. Not too close, not at an object. Then you bring your awareness, your focus to your breath. Inhale, diaphragm expanding. Exhale, diaphragm contracts. This, this happens spontaneously without your awareness but for healing practice, using focus and imagination, you have to visualize it. And you do that by inhaling white light as the air coming in, filling your lungs. The absorption breath spontaneously attained is the energy of the, the elements through the air moving to every cell in your physical body. Then you combine these two codes and exhale blue light. Thinking of it, it goes everywhere or to space, like the sky. Inhale white light energy filling your lungs. The energies of that as all the elements to every cell in your physical body as red light in a flash. Then these two codes together is blue light out the nose sharing the results to all the beings in boundless space.
Now lately, we've been doing this practice up to one hour every morning before sunrise. Starting with the three lights meditation and then simply resting in equipoise of Kasu. And this is the same phase as the creation stage of all meditation practices. Inhale, white light, fill the lung. Red light flashing to every cell in your body. The middle breath. The two together out the new nose, sharing the healing breath, resulting to all beings throughout space. The red light coming in is the same as insight. The energy itself, power. Bringing the insight and the power together, the exhale of blue light to space is represented as compassion. Then you bring these three lights together into a tiny particle creating an energy center called the chakra, bindu, or tigli in the center of your chest, in the central channel of your life force. And this immediately connects you to the infinite light of the fabric of boundless space. And this becomes the mode of Kasula. The foundation as a state of Infinite calm abiding. Without any need to create or change or accomplish anything. Simply being present and aware. And then in the early morning hours of the day, you extend that to longer periods of time.
Each person can discern for themselves what's appropriate. We have found that one hour gives excellent result. Then to perform the five element healing meditation, you move from that state of calm abiding with the awareness again creating the tiny particle of clear light in the center of your heart chakra. This in in simply takes you into a state of unity with everything and everyone. Then you visualize that small particle of light to increase into a small sphere of clear light. As small as you can imagine it. In this way, entering into the three-dimensional state of our universe, you keep expanding that small sphere of clear light till it forms a half sphere of green light labeled air. This connects to all the elements and becomes the basis of the five elements healing meditation practice. When you can see that half sphere of green light, like a bowl with a lid, about the size of your thumbnail in the center of your chest, visualize it exiting out the front of your body and up before your eyes, about two feet in front. Then expand it in size to form a large enough area where you can see your physical body just as you are sitting inside. Then expand the air symbol in size to completely enclose a large area of where you are meditating, city, town. Here we visualize the island of Kauai and surrounding ocean. Inside this half sphere labeled air. Increase it in size to completely enclose Mother Earth, including her atmosphere of air. And apply it to the entire solar system, billions of miles in diameter. All the planet, sun, everything inside. Expanding this in your meditation to completely enclose our spiral disc shaped galaxy. Trillions and trillions of miles in every direction.
They move beyond the ability of your conceptual mind and merge it with boundless space. Beyond meditation, this state is called the state of contemplation. Simply be present and contemplate boundless space. Everything that appears exists in this dimension. The nature of everything in this dimension is light. These two together as energy cause the healing effect by imagining the half sphere of green light to again enclose the galaxy. Reduce it in size to just enclosing our solar system. Smaller and smaller to just enclosing Mother Earth, which it actually does. Smaller to just enclosing this island of Kwai, or a large area of where you are doing this healing practice. Shrinking it now down to a size large enough to see your body sitting inside. Bringing the full natural healing of the life force of the universe through your psychic power into your body. Then finish the practice by again bringing it to its original small size in front of your eyes. Then to chest level into your heart chakra. Start the shrinking process until it becomes a tiny sphere of clear light. Then from that, smaller and smaller to the, a particle similar to an atom. Then again, relax in the present moment in space.
no meditation. Kusul, relax. Finish the practice, simply bring your awareness into the area you are practicing in front of your eyes. Share the results with everybody throughout the day and night. Now this one meditation practice of the three lights and the five elements applied in this way as healing physical, mental, and emotionally, spiritually can be incorporated into any mo healing modality and taught to children, teenagers, or adults as an exceptional method of healing. And when applied to the state of conditioned existence, which we all find ourselves in, helps one to individually and collectively grow or socially grow develop and evolve into our natural state of awareness itself allowing the mind and everything that it presents experiences sense pleasures thoughts to fade away Then appears the path of skillful means in Tibetan Buddhism using tantric deity or tantric methods as the mind of the teacher or outer guru combining with your own inner natural mind, the inner guru To allow one to move beyond the states of growing and developing into the evolutionary trends of which we are intended as human beings to develop maturity or Buddhahood. When you do that, tonight we are going to 
connect to the mind of the Lama as the deity Chen Rei Zi, bringing compassion, power, and insight as a method of evolving, quickly attaining higher and higher states of experiential development and higher and higher states of evolving realization or intelligence. Simply by the oral instruction of connecting to the mind of the Lama as inseparable from this deity, and tonight, of course, we're using Tara and Chen Rezi together. So we'll start with Tara. Tara with her mantra visualization and the sea syllable Tom connect to the five elements and all the five states of higher awareness that we use in Tibetan Buddhism to transform conflicting emotions and liberate sentient beings from their negative habitual tendency. We start with the visualization of a Lama in front, your choice. As the transmission of this practice of the white Tara, space Tara, the ultimate mother element, which is the nature of the universe and nature of the mind, inseparable. From the Lama's forehead, you visualize he or she sitting in front, facing you, just as I am facing you. With white light coming from the Lama's head into your head, with the transmission of the deity visualization of being Tara in the meditation practice. Then you visualize red light from the Lama's throat into your throat as the transmission or empowerment of the Lama's speech as the seed syllable or creation sound and the mantra affecting your speech to become more and more powerfully kind and considerate. Like one's mother. And you see blue light from the Lama's heart chakra to your heart chakra as the wisdom transmission of how to use these higher states of awareness in your present condition. Understanding not only the usage, but the result. Knowledge and insight developing together. Then the Lama, three lights shining simultaneously, creates the transmission within your body of the three sounds, Om, Ah, and Hom. A white Om in the center of your head a red ah and a sphere of red light in your throat, and a blue home in your heart center, and a blue sphere. At this point, the Lama merges into you, and this is the fourth empowerment or transmission of union. And with this, any idea of separation between the relative and ultimate states of awareness disappear.
and you become White Tara. Young in age, beautiful, healthy, dressed in silks and jewels, blonde colored hair, bound up and down the back with jewels of the five jewel tiara crown. The silks and jewels representing the five wisdoms and five elements. Right foot and left foot in full lotus position. The back of the feet resting on the thighs. The right hand and the symbol of complete generosity. Palm outward resting on the right knee. Left hand with the thumb and little finger holding the stem of a lotus symbolizing loving kindness, compassion, and holding the text on the lotus of the mother of perfect wisdom, Prajnaparamita, called the Heart Sutra. In this way, all of the symbology of this path of skillful means is being activated with the practice of you being Tara, seeing the seat syllable Tom and Bomb in your heart center and sounding her mantra Om Tara Tutari Turi Soha and the mantra of the seven eyes and seven spheres Om Tara Tutari Turi Mama Ayu Pune Jana Kukti Kuru so far. To start the practice, you visualize your three dimensional symbol of full maturity as Tara in the human condition projected to your mother in front, facing you life side. Then you project it to your father and all your relatives, everybody you have karma with, friends, lovers, even adversaries and enemies, animals, pets, and so forth. Then to the whole human race existing on the planet today, eight billion humans as Tara, then project it to all the animals in the ocean and on the land. Then the infinite variety of spirits that inhabit the four realms of the spirit world pervading boundless space. So your mind is filled with this symbol of compassion, power, insight, and kindness. Once that's accomplished, it produces the heart mantra inside a five colored sphere with the tom and the vong overlapped in the center. And the heart mantra, 10 letters surround the seed soul, starting with the tom. Om Tara Tutare Ture Soha. Om in front. Om Tara Tutare Ture Soha. Om Tara Tutare Ture Soha. Om Tara Tutare Ture Soha. Om Tara Tu Tare Tu Re 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 
so hot. Om Dara Du Dara Du Re So Ha Om Dara Du Dara Du Re So Ha Om Dara Du Dara Du Re So Ha As you're sounding this mantra, see eight shafts of light go out from the tom in your heart center. And they carry the eight wisdoms of overcoming all toxic situations that arise in conditioned existence from praise and disgrace, praise and blame, fame and disgrace, pleasure and pain, loss and gain. So you see those being transformed into occasions for spiritual practice. And the center is the hub and in these spokes emanating like this, out in front, down and up behind you, and then into the sky above. As you sound this mantra, Om Jara Du Jara Du Re So Ha 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 Then you as Waitara emanating these eight what we call uh, antidotes See the mantra on the tar re tu tar re. So those eight syllables of the mantra, one on each of these eight spokes. And then above your head is the om, and below you is the ha, the first and ending syllables of this mantra. You visualize that. Om Tara Tu Tara Tu Re So Ha Om Tara Tu Tara Tu Re So Ha Om Tara Tu Tara Tu Re So Om Ha Om Tara Tu Tara Tu Re So 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 Ha Om Tara Tu Tara to re so ha. Then after 21 or so recitations of this Tara mantra, generating the eight spokes as antidotes to the eight worldly dharmas, with the own the energy of the universe coming down into you, and ha, the support of this worldly situation being healed as the ha sphere under you, then a hub, a, the hub is a tongue. These eight spokes now attached to a wheel. So we have the hub with the tongue, and the eight spokes to the wheel, and the wheel is the white tar's long life mantra. Also, the hundred syllables of the Tibetan alt alphabet, and also the Vajrasattva mantra, 
all in that wheel. And the wheel is this way. From top, out the front, around, up the back, to the top. Eight spokes connecting to the tom. When you can see that, the tom chases into vom, the sound of space vibration. And the white Tara long life mantra appears on the wheel and it starts to create a sphere as it turns counterclockwise rapidly as a protecting sphere of energy around you just beyond the reach of your hand. And the mantra is Om Tara Tu Tare Ture Mama Ayu Pune Jana Putin Guru So So that mantra circles you. The short Tara mantra tandles it's established the eight spokes. The bomb now activates the wheel to turn rapidly, creating the Bodhisattva field of energy and support, enclosing your visualization of White Tara. Om Tara Tu Tara Tu Re Mama Ayu Pune Jana Putinku Soha Om Tara Tu Tara Tu Re Mama Ayu Pune Jana Putinku Soha Om Tara Tu Tara Tu Re Mama Ayu Pune Jana Putinku Soha Now the sphere established the eight spokes, antidotes to all eight worldly dharmas, praise and blame, disgrace and pain, pleasure and pain, loss and gain, which is the whole drama world, especially in this planet, all antidotes in place. Balm is the creation sound of the seven eye, seven sphere, white Tara practice. And this is simply put as the third eye is in her forehead, that's number one. Her two worldly eyes, an eye in the palm of each hand, and an eye on the bottom of each foot resting facing upward on her thigh. These six eyes, the third eye is creating this skillful means practice of the white Tara long life practice. And the two eyes of the face are looking at the God realms of the celestial gods of arrogance and the war and war gods of fighting and quarreling jealousy, transmitting, transforming all of their conflict into emotional conflict into what we call occasions for spiritual practice of helping others. 
In the two eyes on the right and left hand, the right hand is viewing the human world, the left hand, the animal world. In the human world, neediness being transformed, in the animal world, ignorance. And then the two eyes on the bottom of the feet, the demonic spirits of the, we call lower realm spirits, those affected by greed, we call hungry ghosts, traitors, and then those afflicted by anger and abusive nature, what's it called, the demon god world, all of their negative energy transformed into loving kindness and compassion. All of that takes place with these six eyes, two in the face, two in the hand, two in the feet. Om Tare Tutare Ture Mama Hai Purnye Jai so, uh, so those six syllables, two light up the eyes and the face, two light up watch, eyes washing from each hand, and the two washing from the feet. Mama, Ayu, Purnya, Jana, Putin, Kuru, So, uh, And are they the different realms? They are watching all the sentient beings in those six realms of transmigration, emotional conflict, all of their emotionality transformed into occasions of spiritual practice, of sutra or tantric practice in Tibetan tradition, producing ultimate awareness as a result. And that is the sphere that surrounds you as Tara, moving into those six spheres of worldly existence. Om Tara Tu Tara Tu Re Mama Ayu Purnye Jan Kuti Kuru Soha, causing all their emotional conflict to be transformed into the antidotes, the same way the basic Tara mantra transformed the eight worldly dharmas into their antidotes. That way all beings reach the same level of maturity as Tara and are visualized as Tara, white Tara, or any Tara that you, you're practicing. Om Tara Tu Tara Tu Re Maha Ayu Purnye Jana Bhakti Guru Soha Om Tara Tu Tara Tu Re Maha Ayu Purnye Jana Bhakti Guru Soha Om Tara Tu Tara Tu Re Maha Ayu Purnye Jana Bhakti Guru Soha Om Tara Tu Tara Tu Re Good 
The seed syllable creation sound of Tara is Vam or, or Vam in Sanskrit for space. And it is also the five elements visualized by stupa. It is also the five color codes of the five Taras as earth, water, fire, and air. So the Tom evolves into the space element and it is the creation sound of the eight spokes and the hub which turns into a sphere enclosing the white tara. And every white tara in your mandala, infinite in number, applied to infinite sentient beings, is the same, doing the same thing. Om tara tu tara juri mama ai kune jana putin kru soha Om Tara Tu Tare Juri Mama Hai Pune Jana Pute Kuru Soha Om Tara Tu Tare Juri Mama Hai Pune Jana Pute Kuru Soha Om Tara Tu Tare Juri Mama Hai Pune Jana Pute Kuru Soha Om Tara Tu Tare Juri Mama Ai Kune Jan Pukti Kuru Soha Om Tara Tu Tare Juri Mama Ai Kune Jan Pukti Kuru Soha Om Tara Tu Tare Juri Mama Ai Kune Jan Pukti Kuru Soha Om Tara Tu Tare Juri Mama Ayu Pune Jan Pukti Kuru Soha Om Tara Tu Tare Juri Mama Ayu Pune Jan Pukti Kuru Soha Om Tara Tu Tare Juri Mama Ayu Pune Jan Pukti Kuru Soha Om Tara Tu Tare Juri Mama Ayu Pune Jan Pukti Kuru Soha Om Tara Tu Tare Juri Mama Ayu Pune Jan Pukti Kuru Soha Om Tara Tu Tare Juri Mama Ayu Pune Jan Pukti Kuru Soha Om Tara Tu Tare Juri Mama Ayu Pune Jan Pukti Kuru Soha Om Tara Tu Tare Juri Mama Ayu Pune Jan Pukti Kuru 
Now the white tar of the seven eyes and seven spheres evolves into a visualizing the seven spheres as seven energies outside of her hub, her sphere of influence. And when you do that, these seven spheres appear, this is the hub, this mantra is circling around the Tara as it spins. Then outside of that six feet in every direction, the heavenly realms are a gold sphere the war and war grounds realms are six feet outside as a green sphere. The needy human realm, a blue sphere. The animal world, a white sphere. Six feet outside that. The deprived spirits, a red sphere. And then the demonic spirits is a dark blue or black sphere. In these six spheres, you visualize 36 feet out from the bomb in your heart center. So from this point to this point, six feet is, the, as I said, it's the celestial comes from her left eye. Then the war and war gods, they come from the right eye mantra, Mama Ayu. Then Punya Jana is the human and animal realm. Those are from a eyes in her hands, and then the deprived spirit and the hell realms of the two eyes and her feet. So this is Mama Ayu, Punye Jana, Bhukti Kuru, Soha. Then from the deity emanates to those six places, Mama Ayu, Punye Jana, Bhukti Kuru, from her feet. So uh, now any part of this accomplishes the practice. If you can just see the sea syllable bomb in the heart, the eight spoke, the hub, any of these spheres outside of her, any of the light coming from the syllable sounds from the eyes and the face, hands and feet. So this is like all deity yogas, a moving mantra meditation applied universally without a time factor in a state of timeless awareness to the benefit of all sentient beings filling space. Om Tara to Tare to Mama Ayu Punya Jana Pukti Guru Soha Om Tara to Tare to Mama Ayu Punya Jana Pukti Guru Soha Om Tara to Tare to Mama Ayu Punya Jana
Now, as if this wasn't complicated enough, in each of these spheres are unopened lotus blossoms representing the potential of each of those sentient being kind of sentient beings in their color code so in the celestial realm they're golden or yellow colored on un unopened lotus blossom war and war gods green animal world blue blossom white sphere and animal world excuse me blue sphere human world blue blossom animal world white blossom Traitors, deprived spirits, red blossoms, demon gods, demon hell beings, dark blue or black blossoms. All of these unopened blossoms represent the potential of all those sentient beings to become Buddhas. And as you sound the mantra, they do through the Buddha Tara. Each, in each of the realms, the tar is that color also. In the central realm, she's white tar. Om Tara Tu Tare Ture Mama Ayu Pune Jana Putin Kuru Soha Om Tara Tu Tare Ture Mama Ayu Pune Jana so some call her the crystal Tara. What, what one are we doing now? We're, we're imagining, imagining the white, the white okay. energy resulting in all sentient beings as the blossoms, unopened lotus okay. blossoms in each of these spheres as we say the mantra. Om Tara Tu Tare Ture Mama Ayu Pune Jana Bhukti Guru Soha Om Tara Tu Tare Ture Mama Ayu Pune Jana Bhukti Guru Soha Om Tara Tu Tare Ture Mama Ayu Pune Jana Bhukti Guru Soha Om Tara Tu Tare Ture now we finish the meditation saying the mantra we bring the black sphere into the red sphere those together into the white sphere those three together into the blue sphere those together into the green sphere all six together into the gold sphere it disappears into the hub of the wheel and down the shaft into the heart of white Tara into the bomb. And you do that as you say the mantra. Om Tara Tu Tare Ture Mama Ayu Pune Jana Bhukti Kuru Soha Om Tara Tu Tare Ture Mama Ayu Pune Jana Bhukti Kuru Soha Om Tara Tu Tare Ture Mama Ayu Pune Jana Bhukti Kuru Soha Om Tara Tu Tare Ture Mama Ayu then all of that into the hub, into this, which is the, actually a sphere, because these are all coming in from every direction into the white tar and down the eight spokes into her heart center into the sea of the palm. Om Tara Tu Tare Ture Mama Ayu Pumineja Bhukti Kuru Soha Om Tara Tu Tare Ture Mama Ayu Pumineja Bhukti Kuru Soha
then the hub disappears into the eight spokes, into the, I mean, the wheel disappears into the eight spoke, down, they disappear, all dissolve into the hub, holding the seat oval long. All the mantra sounds disappear into the seat syllable long and it disappears in five colored light into the fabric of boundless space. Either condensed to a tiny particle or expanded to the boundless limits of unlimited space. And you sit in Kusulu. Relax, be present. No meditation.
when you finish the accomplishment stage of Kasulu, then you reappear as the deity, whatever yidam your main practice is, or as any Tara. Or <clears throat> tonight we're going to do the Chen Rezi to finish tonight's practice. The crystal or white Chen Rezi forearms. And uh, when we do the Chen Rezi, this is the same as Tara, compassion, power, and insight, but stressing more method of the application of the six elbows to the six rounds as the accomplishment of compassion, which we use the term altruistically applied compassion, no one left out, and even extended to our environment, this Mother Earth, planet, and then power over the mind and power to, <clears throat> to control appearances so that what arises from your practice is appropriate, not only for you, but universally for everyone. And then the third is insight. This means Understanding that your ultimate nature, your natural nature of the mind is infinitely more beneficial and appropriate than the existing relative states of conflicting emotional involvement or drama. So this symbol of the forearm Chen Rezi is the practice. The actual Chen Rezi is 1,000 arms representing all the deities of the five Buddha families, male and female, peaceful and what we call protector or dakini. But the forearm Chen Rezi demonstrates all the sutra and all the tantra methods in one deity. As the Lama merges into you with the three lights, the Om, Ah, Hum, come down the central channel into the home, the state of ultimate healing, inseparable, no, no kind of separation exists, outer or inner, high or low, none of that, good or bad, none of that. Then this state is the home and it, transforms with these three syllables into the seed syllable tree, which is the creation of the infinite light of the nature of space applied to whatever experiences you have or to whatever thoughts or arising judgments or conflicting emotions, these negative tendencies you have. The Chen Rezi is the antidote the same way the tar was the antidote to the eight worldly dramas. And this is applied again to the six realms, the two God realms, the worldly realms of animals and spirits, animals and humans, and this entire spirit world of the four realms in space. So when you become the Chen Rezi, the Buddha Amitabha of infinite light, as your Lama merges into you and the Hri appears in your heart center, then light goes out to all the Lama's deities and protectors you take refuge with, comes back into the Hri, and you appear as the mind of the Lama as Chen Rezi, four arms, young, healthy, male aspect, dressed in silks and jewels. And the lotus by the left ear is the symbol of the, all of the sutra practices. The Vajra in the right hand is a symbol of the five Dhyana Buddhas, all the tantric practices. Two hands in meditation practice in the lap is the accomplishment of Mahamudra as Kasulu. 
five colors of silks, five elements, six kinds of jewelry, six bodhisattva training grounds. And there's an empty mirror below the 32 petal lotus sun and moon seat he sits on as the nature of your mind, as it appears without any conflicting thoughts or emotional response. Before we start the practice, we start with this prayer. This is from the Sutra text. Bodhisattva Chenrezig, whose white crystal body is not closed by any fault, whose head is adorned by the perfect Buddha, Amitabha, of infinite light, who looks upon all beings with eyes of compassion, to Chenrezig as the Lama, I pay homage. To all the sublime ones as Chenrezig, all the Buddhas, their sons and daughters, all of these who reside in the ten directions in three times, with complete sincerity, I pay honor, homage, and respect. I make offerings of water, flower, incense, butter lamps, perfume, food, music, and other real and imaginary offerings. I beseech the noble assembly to accept these. I confess all in skillful action. I rejoice in the spiritual matter, merit of whatever virtue we are generating. I pray the Dharma wheel, the Mahayana, Hinayana, and teachings on voidness be worldly disseminated. I speech the Buddhas not to pass into nirvana, to stay in this world and turn the Dharma wheel. And whatever merit I have accumulated be the cause of enlightenment for all sentient beings. I pray to you as the Lama Chenrezig, I pray to you as the Yidam Chenrezig, I pray to you as perfect wisdom, Chenrezig, I pray to you as the Bodhisattva of loving kindness, Chenrezig, you, the great compassion and victor, please hold us with compassion. Numberless, us numbers with some sentient beings who wander in endless suffering called samsara. There is no other refuge in you as the protector. Please bestow the blessing to obtain maturity, omniscient Buddhahood. Omani pay me home. Omani pay me home. Omani pay me home. Omani pay me home. As we say this mantra, we generate Chenri Z as the mother who created us and all mother sentient beings in the six realms, the heavenly realms, the human animal realms, in the lower realms of demons and deprived spirits, all Shenrezi. The heart mantra appears from you, filling your mind as infinite sentient beings as this symbol of compassion, power, insight, and loving kindness. Omani baby home, 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 Omani baby home. Oh, 
When you sound the free, all sentient beings as generally as they dissolve into you from every direction. You as the central Chenri Z dissolve into the six syllables of the mantra surrounding the Shri in your heart center. All of that in a five colored sphere of light, the spirit disappears into boundless space. Relax. In the present moment, in bliss, Kusul. And you move from this state of accomplishment of peace and tranquility in 
manifesting the deity in all worldly situations and all sound becomes the mantra Om Mani Bhimi Hum. In this way, all that appears and everything you hear is transformed into the mandala of the Bodhisattva Chenri Z. And we dedicate the softness, warmth, the loving kindness, and the extension of all of our best wishes to all sentient beings with the dedication prayer. Kewa di nirdu da, chagya jempo drugirne, to washing king malu ba, te yi sala go parsho, sanje kusu den pai jemla dam. Shoni Maker Dim Pai Jim La Dong. Can do Miche do Pai Jim La Ki. Chitar Goma Mumam Ju Bar Shoo. By this virtue of having realized Maha Mojur may quickly establish every being in that state without exception. By the blessings of the three Kayas of the Buddha being accomplished. By the blessing of the truth of the Dharma being unchanging. And by the blessing of the wishes of the Sangha, that's us being unwavering, may all dedication prayers be fulfilled. May all beings have happiness, the cause of happiness, and establish through our practice in bliss and equanimity. May all the lamas, gurus, teachers, benefactors all have long life, good health, happiness, and prosperity. May all their wishes be fulfilled. Mahalo, Juchiche, thank you for, for a lovely evening together. May it benefit this planet and all the sentient beings, animals, humans, and spirit, our family present on the planet today. Aloha, Tashi Delay.